Hello, welcome to Tenant Tech. I'm your instructor, Clark, and today we're going to learn about designing timber frames using the 3D CAD program SketchUp. This is part three of a five-part series where I show you how to generate shop drawings for the timbers in your design, how to export those to layout, and how to add dimensions and annotations to them. Nice and slow. Here's the model we created in the previous video. I've done a little more work on it, adding the braces and the missing girts from the other side. And I've also marked the grid lines uh, with the bent and wall notation. So I've got bents one through four and walls A through C. Now we learned in the last video that if you right click on a timber and say make shop drawings, the extension will show you all four sides of the timber with all the joinery on it. And then it's gonna prompt you to save this to a SketchUp file someplace. We're going to create a, a separate SketchUp file for each timber in the model. But notice here that the name that it's defaulting to is the name of the definition of the component. Let's go back to the model and I'll show you what, what I mean there. If I highlight this timber and then go up and look at the entity info window, you'll see that I've got a definition name. That was the name that we used when we pulled the, the um, definition out of a, of a component library. And this instance name is blank. Now, if I put something in there, if I say post 1a, which is indeed the, the name we want for this post because of the grid lines. And now if I make shop drawings on it, you'll see that it's changed the name of the drawing that it's going to save it under to the name of the instance. I'm going to cancel that again. And this is the same scheme that's also used when we make a timber list. Now, I'm going to cover timber lists in the next video, but you're going to want to give each of these timbers a unique name. I can't have all of these timbers ending up with the same name. The files will overwrite each other. I'm going to briefly go back to the, the full model we started with, the one with all the colored faces on it. And I'm going to explain what those colors are about here. Um, what I'm doing with these pink and yellow faces that I'm marking the reference faces and my own personal color code is that pink is for reference faces that don't show and yellow is for reference faces that do and when I make shop drawings on this you'll see that not only do I get the pink faces but I also get these little triangles which I'm using to indicate that these are the reference faces or the reference edges that we'll do all our layout off of when we get to the shop. I'm going to go back to our in progress model again and if I make shop drawings on these that don't have the color codes, you'll see that we don't get any of those triangles. So let's go ahead and add some colors to some of these faces. Remember that uh, my convention was to use hot pink for a reference face that doesn't show. So I'm going to double click on this timber to edit it so that I can select a single face, come up here and pick a color and click on it. And then I've painted it. I can go over here and do the same on this side. And I can stop editing the timber. Now notice that uh, this was a component, so if I change one, I change them all. And I got a couple things that I didn't really want or didn't really expect. Uh, for one thing, uh, on this timber, it's not this face that I want to be the reference face. I want it to be this one. So I can do it a couple different ways. I can just choose to mirror this timber. I'll just use the mirror tool and I uh, will mirror it around the green. And I think I'll need to do the same thing over in this corner. I've got that mapped to a hotkey, so I can just do it that way too. And then on these timbers, um, I wanted this to be khaki, not pink. Khaki is my personal choice for a reference face that doesn't show. So this is an opportunity to show you another plugin that I wrote. It's called Repaint Face. And this will just save you a couple of clicks when you're going through and adding your reference face colors. When you activate the plugin, it'll ask you for color. Uh, I'm just going to choose khaki. I just hit K and it went to that. And now when I double click on a face, it's going to open up that timber, the timber definition, and paint the face that was under the cursor at the time. Now again, you see that that's not quite what I wanted because now it turned and made this one yellow. I'm going to do Control Z to undo that and stop and talk a little bit about component definitions. Up here you can see that the, the post has a name and it's got a definition 
and that there are eight of them in the model. That's the eight posts. But I want to treat the four center posts differently. So I'm going to select those four. And I'm going to say, make unique. And now you can see up here that I've only got four of these, and I've got four of these. And now when I repaint them, they're going to get treated differently. They're, these four are siblings in the middle, and the four on the edges are, are siblings. Uh, let me just show you what I mean. I'm going to go back to that repaint face, choose khaki, and double click. Now I've got two pink faces on these, and a pink and a yellow on these. And when I make shop drawings, you can see that uh, I'm getting my triangles that indicate the reference faces. And now I'm going to go back to that model that's got all of the timbers named correctly and all of the color coding done for the reference faces. So once again, I'm going to make the shop drawing for post 1A. And this time I actually am going to save it. Uh, notice that it's a, a subfolder underneath my, my main project folder. I recommend you do this, uh, a folder called shop drawings or something similar. And I've made this before, so it's going to give me this warning about overwriting it. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And now I'm going to open that file. And let's take a closer look at the shop drawing that we made. Now, instead of this just being a preview like we were doing when we were testing out the shop drawings, uh, testing out our, our joinery to make sure that they cut the mortises correctly, we're actually in a real SketchUp file now. And notice that I created these two scene tabs. And not only did we get the, the four sides of the shop drawing we've been looking at, but here's a 3D view of the timber. And it's got all the mortises cut in it. And I can orbit around and choose the view that I want. And this is going to get exported to um, layout also. So I'm going to pick a, a view that's going to look nice in layout that kind of shows everything. I'm going to update this, uh, this view. And let's go back to the 2D version. Um, I want you to notice that uh, these are actually 3D timbers, not 2D. It's just that I've changed the camera view to be a non-perspective mode. And I can always go back to that just by hitting my Scene tab. Note also that uh, I've shown the, the mortise here. And here's one profile and here's the other. But here on the back side, the opposite side of the mortise, I've managed to delete all those dashed lines that I think are just confusing when you get to get to the shop and you're laying out your timber. There's nothing to lay out on this face for this mortise. So I did my best to go and find all those what I call backside mortises and erase those. Now if there's any other changes you want to make here before we send this to layout, go ahead. Uh, sometimes you, for example, you might want to change the order that these appear in. And I might want to say move this one up to the top and have this one be near the bottom because this is where I'm going to um, put a lot of the dimensions. Now, it turns out that uh, I kind of like this one because it's got more information going on. It's got uh, every mortise is seen either in profile or directly on. So when I'm doing my dimensions, and we'll see that in a second, I'd like to have a view like that on the bottom. That's my preference. You can do it any way that you want. But I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now I'm going to send it to layout. So if you're familiar with layout, you probably already know about this. Uh, send to layout option from the main file menu, but that's not the one we're going to use. We're going to go back to the timber framing extensions and use this send shops to layout function. Now, again, if you're familiar with layout, then you're already familiar with layout templates. And that's what we're being prompted for here. A layout template is nothing more than a layout file stored in a special location. Now that location is somewhat obscure and that's not where we're going to save our layouts to. Our, our layout templates too. You can save that anywhere on your hard drive that you want. I put mine alongside of my, uh, my uh, component libraries. And this example that I'm going to show you right here is one that you can download from my website. But the very first time that you export a shop drawing to layout for a particular project, you'll get prompted for the template. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And we're just going to wait for a second while behind the scenes, a layout file is being created using that template and then a page will be appended to the end of it for this particular timber. I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to open a second shop file, uh, post 2A, shop drawing. And we're going to send that one to layout as well. But this time, it's not going to prompt me for the 
template because we've already done that and it's just going to tack it on to the existing file. So a couple of things to remember here. One, make sure that you don't already have this file open in layout because uh, we can't append to it if it's already open. And also notice it does take a little while, but it's a lot faster than doing it manually. Also notice that if I try to do this a second time, um, it's going to prompt me or warn me that this already exists and um, let me know that if I go ahead and follow through on this, it's going to overwrite that. Uh, we're not going to do that. Now let's go ahead and open that layout file that we just created. I'm going to open layout and find that file. Now it's going to have been given the name of the original model that we started with, in this case Queen Post Cabin, and it's going to be in the same folder that the shop drawings were in when we uh, started when we, when we uh, did the first export to layout. So you can see that I've got three pages that were created, uh, a cover page, and I expect that you'll replace this with maybe a, you know, a 3D view of the whole project, and then the two shop drawings that we exported and had added on to the end of the layout file. And you can see that both views got brought in, the 3D view here and the 2D view. And as always, you can double click to edit the view. You can orbit and zoom a little bit in here. Uh, and you can, you know, change the scale. And of course, you can just, you know, move the whole window around as well and position these where you want them. The exact placement of these two viewports can be controlled from back in SketchUp from the configuration options underneath uh, the timber framing extensions. And let's look at what some of these do. Uh, these two rows here will control the position of those two viewports so you can get them to fit exactly where you want them on your template. Some of these other things uh, affect the uh, shop drawings as well. Um, whether or not you want to show these north, south, east, west labels on the faces of the timbers, you can turn that on or off. Uh, the unroll or unwrap, that affects the order that these appear in. Uh, I usually use the unwrap so that um, the, this face here is the one that would be right here, as if you'd wrapped the, the shop drawings around the, the timber. Um, the unroll will put them in the opposite order. The size and quantity, let me go back to layout here, uh, that, that appears up in here, uh, this just has the size, but if it were a scantling, the quantity would also appear. And you can control whether you want that to appear, and if so, where you want that to appear, again, so that you can get it to land just where you want it to fit inside your template, and then whether you want that to be bolded or not. The side spacing is the distance here in inches between the, the faces. And if you feel like you've got um, not enough space to put all your dimensions in there, you can make that value a little larger. Or if you feel like uh, you want to make the, the whole thing a little bit um, more compact, then you can make that uh, a smaller value. Now let's say that I want to add another page to that layout model. Let me just cancel this and go back to the, the full model. And let's do a GERT this time. If I right click on this and say make shop drawings and we'll save that to the usual place and then open that file and send that to layout. I'm going to get a warning that uh, this is already open in layout. So I'm going to just hit OK here, go to layout and close this file. Save it first, of course. And now when I go back to SketchUp, now I can add that on. So you can't add pages to the layout file if that layout file is open. OK, let's go ahead and say OK. And now we can go back to layout and open that again. And now we've got a, a third drawing. Now, look what happened over here. Uh, the viewport is set up for a vertical timber like a post, but this was a horizontal um, view of, the, of a girt. It's a horizontal timber. Now, because I've already made the page, it's OK if I go back to SketchUp and go to the 3D view and maybe I'm going to just change the orientation here. I'm just going to rotate this up 90 degrees and get a view that looks kind of like this. Don't forget to uh, update the scene and save the file. Then we'll go back to layout. 
And if I just update the model reference, now I've got that new view. And I can zoom in on it and maybe pan and zoom and get it just looking just the way I want it. Now let's talk about adding dimensions and annotations to your shop drawings. I'm going to go back to this page, the post 1A, and I'm going to select the linear dimension tool and start adding dimensions. Now if you've done this in, uh, in layout before, then this will all be familiar to you. But if you're new to layout, I think you're going to find that the dimension tool in layout is much more powerful than the one that's in SketchUp. Uh, in my template, I've made the dimension lines and numbers a different color. And what I'm doing is just going through and adding the dimensions that I need in my shop for the way I like to do things. It's going to be different for you and different for who your intended audience is. Uh, in my shop, this probably would be enough. But if I was making this, for example, for uh, students for teaching a class, I'd have to add a lot more dimensions because they're not going to be used to doing things the way that I, that I do. They won't know all my conventions. So I might have to add every peg hole. And this can be a little tedious, but um, again, I think you'll find that this is a, a more convenient tool than the one that's in SketchUp. For example, I can, uh, I can add this, I can edit this, and I can move this around, and it's, uh, you've got more options over where the numbers go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mark that this is uh, an eight inch deep mortise, and that this is a through mortise. Here I'm just using the label tool. And going ahead and adding all the um, notations or dimensions that I'm going to want when I print this to be a shop drawing. Uh, we can do angular dimensions too. That's here. And I'll just put that one on here. One, two, three, four. And there's that. And again, if that's too crowded, I can pull the call out out here or even over here. And that's how you can put an angular dimension on. I've got one more thing I want to show you here. I'm going to go back to SketchUp and back to the shop drawing. Remember when we said extensions, timber framing, uh, send shops to layout, that it had to open the layout file, and it had to parse the whole file, and then append this uh, a page to the end of the file for this particular shop drawing. Now, as the project gets bigger and you've added more and more pages, uh, that process can take longer each time because it has to open the file each time you do this. And that's why I provided this uh, batch mode for sending shops to layout. When you choose this, it's going to open the layout file once and then continually add all the shop drawings that it finds in that folder to the end of that layout file. It goes much faster than doing them one by one, and of course it's a lot less tedious. Uh, just make sure that all your shop drawings have already been tweaked the way you want them, that you've opened up each of the SketchUp files and and taking a look at the 3D views, the order of the timbers, and everything's the way that you want it. And note also that when you do a batch mode of layout, uh, send shops to layout, it's going to overwrite any duplicate pages that it finds without any warning. That's all I have today from Ten and Tech. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and we'll see you next time. Take care.